What's up everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at the 2024 Toyota Sequoia Platinum. Finished off in silver, the Platinum model starts right around $73,000. Underneath the hood, this is powered by the iForce Max 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 that's paired to the 10 speed automatic transmission, pumping out 437 horsepower, 583 pound feet of torque, that power is primarily sent to the rear wheels. However, this Platinum has the four wheel drive system. It weighs in right around 5,800 pounds, yet it'll still do zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. Top speed is 109 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 22 and a half gallons. You'll expect to see around 21 miles per gallon in the city, 24 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 122 inches. Its overall length is 208.1. It has a width of 79.8 a height of 74.2 and its ground clearance measures in at 8.6 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for the uh, Toyota Sequoia, in a lot of angles this resembles the Toyota Tundra very very similarly. So let's start up front where the uh, massive chrome Toyota badge also has a blue inner ring indicating this is the hybrid model. So this is also paired with that hybrid system. There's also a forward facing camera underneath that. Plenty of cutouts provide a lot of cooling with the gloss black and then chrome surrounding the entire grill there. There's also sensors in the lower section with a little bit more cutouts. And this also has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals. The turn signals have a really unique design to them. I like the shape of these housings too. And down in the gloss black section are the LED fog lights. Now this also has a lower air dam just to help improve with some aerodynamics with cutouts on both sides there. And then the sensor is located in the middle of the grill for the adaptive cruise and all of those settings. Now there's some really nice lines that come down both sides of the hood. And then up top, there's also a camera at the top of the windshield in two different areas. I'll show that once we hop inside. iForce Max badge is on the side too. And then this also has a set of 20 inch wheels. They're finished off in a dark gray with that multi-spoke design to them. Gloss black for the fender arches, which matches that trim piece in the lower section. Platinum is finished off in chrome there. And then this has massive tow mirrors. There's a camera underneath, turn signal is up top, and these will actually retract or extend to give you a little bit more visibility when you have a trailer. Up top is a full moon roof, gloss black for the roof racks. And then there's really nice lines that run down the side too. And that lower side skirt, crisp line from that headlight up front, and then a line behind the back door handle leading to the taillights. So very nice contoured lines. In back, this has a body colored spoiler with that third brake light. Wiper blade is in the lower section. LED taillights with that same design for the turn signals up front, which is nice to see. There's a backup camera, Sequoia badge, more gloss black in that lower diffuser. And this can even tow right around 9,300 pounds. So this is an extremely capable SUV, both for hauling people and hauling any trailers that you may have. Now, as we work our way to the cargo space, if I push on this button right here, that'll actually allows you to open up the glass. So if you don't wanna open up the entire lift gate, very cool to see that. A lot of vehicles have gone away from that, so it's nice that the Sequoia does offer that. And then to open up the lift gate, you can use the button underneath, you can use the key fob, or you can actually kick your foot. So if you do this, you'll hear it beep. And if you have your hands full of groceries, that makes it very convenient to do. Now, once we're in the back, this is a three row. Honestly, not a lot of space behind this third row, but you can adjust the third row. As you can tell, that side is all the way back, that side is moved forwards. All you have to do is pull on this bar here and you can easily do that. So if you can compromise some leg room back there, that gives you more storage space in the back. So just depending on what you're doing for the day, and the third row is also automatic. So you can just push on those buttons on the side and that will lower. You do have a little bit of a step there, but you can actually take this entire lower piece and put it in several different channels. So you'll notice there are three on both sides that you can put this in. So just depending on where the third row is placed, if you have it all the way forwards or back, you can adjust that piece to give you a flat surface. So while there is that step, Toyota did think about that and it gave you some areas where you can place those, which is pretty awesome to see. And then of course you can fold down the captain's chairs too to give yourself a lot more interior space. And then to close this up, over on the right side, you can close and lock it. One on the left side will close it or you can use your foot like I showed earlier. 
as we work our way to the back seating now for this door panel very nice design with all the leather and blue stitching this has a removable sunshade a little bit of storage in the middle section as well as the lower section with a ton of space now this also has the power folding side steps so they will deploy when you open up the door and then we can work our way to these black leather captain's chairs with all the blue stitching. Now, in order to get into that third row, you can walk right through the middle there. If I pull on this tab, however, that will fold the seat down and then you can actually use that tab to lift the seat up too. Now, right behind the seat, you can use this to fold down and to put back up that third row. So if you need to do that from here, you can. And then once I'm in the third row, there's actually a good bit of space. I moved these seats all the way back as you saw earlier. So that gives us more leg room. We have cup holders, even a sunshade for your third row passengers, which is neat to see. There's an armrest with even more storage underneath that. Over on this side, we have two cup holders, even a USB-C. Now at five foot 10, I can actually almost sit upright. My head is up against the headliner. If I needed to be back here, I could, but it's very wide and spacious. So you could have three people easily comfortable in the back. You also have some climate vents too and dome lights. Now these seats also recline. So using that button on the side, I can go all the way back, bring it all the way up. And then there's one more adjustment down below where you can slide the seat forwards and backwards from there. So definitely plenty of space for everyone in the back. And then you can quickly put this seat back in its normal position. And as we work our way to this captain's chair now, there are storage pockets behind both front seats, drink holders. These are even heated and ventilated captain's chairs. And you have all of your climate adjustments for your fan speed, temperature, where you'd like the air to go, and all of the auxiliaries that are located down below. Now, right in the middle, more storage, two cup holders, phone holder right in the middle. And then at five foot 10, plenty of space. You can recline these. We have the adjustable armrest there to really give you a nice, comfortable place to be for the middle. We have a lot of visibility too. So it's very open feeling. It's a massive, I would call this a jumbo SUV. Plenty of space for everyone in the back. Now the front door panels, just like the rear, more storage in both sections there. Memory seating adjustments, all the window adjustments. We have the side mirror adjustments too, more of that stitching. And then the front leather seats, which are also heated and ventilated and they're automatic. All those adjustments are down on the side. You can even adjust the front leg support by using that button down below. And even though this is a big SUV with that running board, it makes it very easy to hop up into. Where we're greeted with the solid and perforated steering wheel, more of that blue stitching. Let's fire this back up though. And we can go over the rest of this information. So on the left side of the steering wheel, there's audio and voice commands along with all the controls for the gauge cluster set up there. On the right side, there's cruise and adaptive cruise with the distance pacing, lane keeping assist, and then mode and tuning for the audio. Now, looking at the gauge cluster right now, on the right side, there's the iForce and Max badge, so you can monitor that hybrid system as well as the boost for the turbos there. Tack is right in the middle along with miles per hour. There's some fixed information in the lower section. And then over on the far left, this is the info you can go through using those buttons on the left side of the steering wheel. So you can scroll through all of this. If you have a trailer hooked up, you can monitor all of that, look at some trip distance, tire pressure, you have a few other vitals there. And then we have a lot of standard safety features that you can go through. So you can customize all of this as needed. There's any messages, and then we're back to some averages. So not a whole lot of configurability, but it's nice that you can easily go through all of that. Now over on the left side of the steering wheel, we have the automatic side steps. So you can put those out, turn them off or have them on auto. There's the rear cargo light, automatic headlights, fuel cap release. There's also a dimmer switch, odometer reset, and then some safety features that you can turn on and off. This has a heated steering wheel. There's all of the outlets in this vehicle that you can send power to, spotlights on the side mirrors. And like I mentioned earlier, they do extend. So by pushing on that button, if you have a trailer, that's just going to give you a little bit more visibility. When you're not towing, you can put them back in. Now this also has a head up display. So it's currently showing miles per hour, speed limit sign and lane keeping assist. This also has the JBL audio sound system. There's a little bit of storage just behind the screen with a 12 volt so you can charge some items, place them up top. And then taking a look at this massive touchscreen system, on this left side, you can go into the navigation when you have that. 
there's music, you can get into your phone when you have that paired, and then go through some of this vehicle information. So you have your current and your history that you can take a look at. You can also go into your vehicle alerts, and then the lower section is settings. So you can scroll through all of this just to set it up the way that you would like to. Not a ton of information, but you can even hook your phone up to this as well, so that way you have a large screen to go through all that info. Now underneath that, heated and ventilated seat adjustments, all of the climate controls too with the fan speed, temperature, where you'd like the air to go. We have the rear adjustments too. You can sync everything and then the modes there of course. Nicely laid out. Power and volume for the radio is on this really neat knob right there. And then underneath that, this does have a trailering system so you can use that in backing up. Very helpful to have. We have a shortcut to the 3D camera system. If I push on that once, this is traditional for Toyotas to show this 360 display there. If I push on it again, it will shut off and then we'll come back to the backup camera in a second. There's traction control, hazards. You even have this adjustment right here. So if I push on that, the vehicle is actually going to start to lower. So we have that adaptive suspension that you can manually do or you can push on that. You can raise it back up just depending on what you need to do. Now there's wireless charging underneath that with some good amount of storage space. There's the e-brake and the auto hold just in front of the shifter. Well, let's put this into reverse where we can take a look at that 360 camera system. So you have no shortage of visibility for this massive SUV. You have guidelines that you can adjust. You have these side mirrors that you can actually poke out here. So if you have a trailer and you just need that much more wide visibility, you can easily do that, which is nice. You can also put this into drive and we have the manual shifting. So you can shift using this. If you're towing or going off the pavement, you can hold the gear, which is of course nice. Now there's also two cup holders up front and then there's also the four wheel drive selector. So you have two high, four high, four low, and you also have a tow and haul mode and various driving modes. So just by twisting on that dial, you will notice that we have custom, there's Sport S Plus, Sport S, Normal, Comfort, and Eco. So just depending on how you're driving for the day, you can set that up as needed. Now for the center armrest, this is a really interesting layout. You have an armrest on both sides, right in the middle, a little bit of storage, there's storage in front. However, you can also slide that forwards if you need to gain quick access or push on one of the buttons on the front of these armrests and lift the entire center armrest up. There's a lot of auxiliaries as well as coin holders, plenty of storage for any items that you would like to place there. Passenger side has a good amount of space for the glove box. We have leather, platinum badge over on the airbag cover. Now, like I mentioned earlier with the camera system up front, we do have this action camera module right here. I believe you could use this as a dash cam. There's power, voice commands, and then you have that action and SD card. This also has the camera system in the rear view mirror. Being such a massive SUV, definitely helpful to have that added visibility. Sunglass holder is also located up top. And then we have all the dome lights. You can open and close the power lift gate. And we have the adjustments for the sunshade and the sunroof itself. So you can quickly open that up. And as far as visibility goes, plenty of visibility over both shoulders. Even with its massive size, you can easily see all around. are up to speed very, very quickly in this jumbo SUV. This Toyota Sequoia is very, very powerful. For its weight, you can get up and move. That's what I love about this vehicle with the amount of power that it has. It's not underpowered by any means. It has plenty of power to get up and move and to even tow whatever items that you have with you for your adventures. So behind the wheel now for this over $70,000 Toyota, I think this is a really cool option. It's a jumbo SUV. So if you're in the market for something that is this large, obviously you are knowing or you know what you are getting into when you're buying this vehicle. But I have put two tanks of gas through this. We went on a three hour, three and a half hour road trip uh, one way. So both ways, right over six hours in this. And honestly, it's a very, very comfortable vehicle. Now, real quick, I want to touch base on MPG because we don't have the V8 anymore from the previous model, which I know MPG probably averaged around 13 or 14. In this, we're at 21 and a half. 
and that is a lot of highway driving, a little bit of city here and there, but it's mainly driving straight out on the highway for that three and a half hours. Uh, so honestly, it's a good improvement over the V8. I know a lot of people aren't liking going to the smaller engines, but it's a lot more fuel efficient, especially for the size of this vehicle. It's awesome to see that over 21 MPG. As far as driving this though, it has been incredibly comfortable. I really don't have any position, uh, any issues with the seating position. I even like how large the armrest is basically on the top of the window. A lot of them are just a thin strip. We have the armrest down below, but you can comfortably sit up top here and drive this vehicle. It is very easy to drive too. It is large. We're basically driving a pickup truck. We're driving the Tundra just with that enclosed back area there. But it's easy to drive, it's easy to get used to, very comfortable and quiet. One thing that I will say, so we have the optional tow mirrors on this particular Sequoia. If you're not really towing that often and you can kind of get by with the normal mirrors, the tow mirrors are very large. They do give you some blind spots over left side and right side, especially if you're coming up to stoplights or there's a dip in the road or something this is a massive mirror they make a little bit of noise out on the highway too so only if you truly need the mirrors and you need them to extend outwards for towing you're using this towing maybe don't opt for them if you're not towing quite as much as you think you are they're really cool don't get me wrong it's awesome to see that but they're big they're bulky you're going to get used to them if you need them uh, just my minor take with the side mirrors there but other than that for over 70 grand this is a really cool vehicle i will say there's some piped in sound to make it sound like a v8 you know it is what it is but we have more efficiency from a smaller engine and we can still get that cool noise from the inside too and from second gear here we go And we're up to speed, even coming around a turn, it carries its weight very, very well for the size of this. Now, the acceleration that I just did was in Sport Plus. There's a few different modes that you can go into all the way down into Eco Mode. So if I slow down again, we'll pop it back into Second Gear in Eco Mode. You can, of course, feel a slight delay in that throttle. So it is nice that you do have functional driving modes. You have the tow and haul mode too, if you have trailers hooked up behind this. So it is nice to see functional driving modes for this style vehicle. I had it in eco mode for the highway driving. Not really sure if that did help or not as far as MPG and everything like that, but it seemed to drive very nice keeping it in eco mode for highway cruising where you don't really need much throttle you are just carrying your speed, of course. And with visibility, hopefully you can kind of tell. I wasn't at that stoplight very long, but you can see from this angle with the mirror there, just how large they are. They are functional, of course. Uh, only if you really need them, though, I think is if you should opt for those. But for the interior of this $70,000, $75,000 Toyota Sequoia, it is nice for the money. All the materials, as you've already seen, everything is easy to go through, pretty straightforward as well. Uh, so it's nice and simple, but it gives you what you need for a daily basis. So when you compare this to some other full-size three-row SUVs, there might be some others that will have more technology, maybe not quite as large though on the interior. You have the third row there that's actually pretty large, as you already saw and it's spacious. There's a lot of people that do like the functionality without the overkill of tech. And that's what you get with the Toyota Sequoia. With a lot of Toyotas in general, they're kind of basic, but they give you what you need. They're going to be a lot more reliable too. So with this Sequoia, this is something that you can daily drive and rack up tons of miles on. And one other thing that I wanted to talk about with this hybrid system. So we have the Max Icon on the far right, along with the battery charge. Now this Sequoia is not a plug-in hybrid, so it does use the engine in order to charge that system. What I have found interesting though, is with the bars on it, basically like your cell phone, you can see the bars for the level of charging. 
in our entire drive, both three and a half hours one way and then all the way back, that never got completely full, but it also never went below halfway. So it's very interesting to see the charge for it. It looked like it could charge, uh, not really out on the highway though as much. So I think mainly city driving is where you can get more of that charge. I have it back to one bar missing as compared to out on the highway where we had two, maybe three bars missing. So it's a very interesting system. It does use basically just that battery system by itself at very slow speeds. I believe it does help a little bit in highway situations, of course, giving it gas, things like that. It gives you that extra uh, electric torque and some of that, and maybe out on the highway, it does kind of help aid in the gas engine as far as giving you better MPG while you're cruising. Uh, but it's an interesting system. It's nice to see, but it's just interesting that it, it won't go completely dead, but I haven't been able to get it fully charged either. But you can't charge it by plugging it in, but it's there. So it's a really nice aid to see. The battery charge is kind of pointless, I think, because it's just kind of there in the background. Uh, so it's not something that you really need to focus on, but it is cool tech to have that aid the gas system. But that is going to wrap it up for the latest generation for the Toyota Sequoia Platinum. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.